Hello, and welcome to Inspired by Faith, a program of the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference. This is a show to help you be inspired by our Catholic faith, live out the gospel message, and deepen your relationship with Jesus Christ. I'm Emily Jaminette, and I'm joined today in studio with my dear friend, Michelle Fanley. We hope this show provides an uplifting 30 minutes to help refresh your soul and strengthen your faith. As it was born out of our friendship, we hope it encourages you to deepen and develop spiritual friendships with your sisters in Christ. Hello, Michelle. Hello, Emily. How are you? Good. I'm really excited about this episode. We are going to be talking all about Bibles and scripture and women. (laughs) (laughs) All of our favorites. Yes. (laughs) And we've been so um, lucky to have been together in many scripture studies together um, since I actually went and dug out my Bible study bag was what I call it. And it had pictures when I first started. My kids were babies. I had literally had my oldest Jacob holding Mary Kate, who's an infant in the image in my my front of my Bible. Bible study bag. So it has been a blessing to um, read the word together with Sisters in Christ over the past 16 years. And um, what a blessing it has been in, in my life. I can't even believe it. And that's something, you know, for women to be able to come together, to not only have spiritual friendship, we would have a lot of good snacks and treats, but to come to open the Bible, to be spiritually fed, um, really has changed my life, my habits. And I look forward to us just diving deep. And we have one amazing um, guest today. We have uh, Sonia Corbett. She was the 2016 conference speaker. And I'm just very, very excited that she gets to be here to kind of unleash on us some great scripture and some great insight. Yeah, and I, Sonia spoke at our 2016 conference, which was Mercy Changes Everything on the Prodigal Father and the Prodigal God. And it was a fantastic talk. And I think my favorite thing about doing this show is I pull up the talks from our old from our previous speakers and listen to them before we do the show. And I was like, wow, I forgot how awesome this talk was. It's- you know, it's so true. I, uh, I still remember Sonia's dress. I, it was just pretty white dress. And the truth was, you know, to be able to have her speak to us at that conference was, was life changing. It really empowered me to, again, to open my Bible, to come to dive deeper into scripture, especially the story of the passage of the prodigal son. And in that talk, she talked about us being the prodigal daughters. So it was, um, it was really, really great. Yeah, I do. I did love it. And I remember um, I have a great picture of all of us and uh, with me and you and Sonia and our friend Rachel. And um, we also had uh, Jennifer Fulweiler spoke that year. So it's a fun thing when it pops up on my Facebook feed. A great memory. Oh, that is so great. Well, I think it's important to kind of pause and talk about Bibles, scripture. You know, there's so many of them. You can run to the dollar store, but it's not going to be a Catholic Bible. (laughs) I had to explain that to my children. So I'm looking forward to kind of pulling Sonia up and talking a little bit about this new, you know, these new Bibles. There's a lot of them out there, but one in particular, you know, a note-taking Bible. What does that look like? And, and how does that work? So um, with that, why don't we go ahead and introduce our guest. Sonia Corbett is called the Bible Study Evangelista and creator of the best modernized of Lexio Divina, the love of the word, Bible study mention, method and journal, a best-selling author and Telly Award winner, broadcaster, her weekly radio and television show and variety of other unique approaches to scripture create space for busy Christians to hear and experience God through scripture. We are just so blessed. Sonia lives in Tennessee with her husband and her boys, and um, she is a convert. So let's welcome her to our podcast today. Hi, everyone. Thanks for having me. It's so great to hear. And Sonia is on St. Gabriel Radio every Saturday at one o'clock. If you don't know that, set your timer and check it out. Absolutely. Sonia, we are, you know, we both were kind of snooping around on your website. It looks fantastic as you've updated. It's, you know, let us, let our listeners know what have you been up to since 2016? Oh, wow. Well, it kind of just, I I actually had someone ask me, do you ever pause to just, to just kind of soak it in? And I think part of my personality and temperament is to just automatically go to the next thing so i don't i don't always keep track of it like i should it's not that i'm not grateful but but i always want to like what's next lord (laughs) you know so so a lot of stuff i've had several books um uh, several tv series that have aired on catholic tv 
Um, but I'm always doing a series um, on my own podcast. So um, right now we're getting ready, I think, to do a series, uh, two of them, one on how God forms leaders in the scriptures, and then another on freedom from anxiety and fear. So that's kind of what I'm studying for. And then I, I started back to school, so I'm working on um, finishing up my theology degree. And I got a couple, but one of my sons is, is in high school, so that's a, a whole thing, too, with homeschooling. So just crazy stuff. I've also started um, one-on-one spiritual consultation, which I had been asked for a long time to do, and I just didn't have the time. But COVID sort of opened that up. So that's been something new that I'm really enjoying, and I'm, I'm seeing the fruit of it, and I'm learning from people. And so that's been a, a really exciting kind of new thing um, that I've kind of delved into, but lots going on. So tell our listeners, how did you get involved in, in contributing to a Bible? Like, that sounds like a really big project. It, well, it was and it wasn't. I'm sure it was a huge project for um, the people who were actually putting it together. But all I really did was add a um, like an essay sort of to help people help people begin and maintain a daily habit in the scriptures. And our ancient practice of the church calls it lectio divina, holy reading. And, or sacred reading, and those are Latin terms. And trying to keep those straight in your head, are, that's sometimes it, it's more difficult sometimes than it should be, really. So what I had done was I was meditating, actually, on the Joyful Mysteries of the Rosary with Our Lady, and I had been asked to, by my bishop in confession, <laughs> he, said, he said something like, the measure of your Catholicism is the measure of your relationship to Mary. And I, I just thought, you know, that's, I wouldn't, didn't come in here for that, Bishop, you know. <laughs> but it kind of led me on this quest to get to know her better. And as I was meditating on those joyful mysteries, I asked her, you know, what, what is it that you want me to know the most about you? What, what do you want me to know? I want to know you. I want to know what you, um, I want to know about you in your own words. And so I was studying the Magnificat, but also meditating on those joyful mysteries. And that's how love the Word came to be. So the steps are L-O-V-E, listen, observe, verbalize, and entrust. And I I put that model together and began offering it on my own podcast and and that kind of thing. And then um, Ave Maria Press, my publisher, um, their, their vice president had asked me to do sort of an essay on that to kind of help people begin that process and maintain it so that's how it came to be and it it wasn't it it really wasn't that hard for me because I had kind of already done it and put it together it was just a thrill to be able to participate in that bible so let's tell our listeners again what that is listen let me see if I got it right it's like a little test listen observe verbalize and trust does that sound correct I really like that I really like that I think that it's simple and yet it what your story is so relatable because as Catholics, our belief system is not outside of scripture, right? It's, That's you know, right. Mary is constantly um, ever present in, in even um, in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, especially in the beginning of Luke. So that's, um, that's really beautiful. Now I, well, and what, go ahead, Sonia. No, no, you go. Well, what struck me about it was the thing that she wanted me to know about her was how much she loves the scriptures. That absolutely floored me. I mean, we don't imagine Mary walking around with a Bible, right? Because she would not have had one the way we have copies. She would have had to go to the temple in the women's uh, area and listened to the pro- proclamation of the Old Testament scriptures. And yet, when I began to study the Magnificat, that's, that's what struck me so strongly was she wanted me to know, she was connecting to me. This is what touches me so deeply about it, because she's connected with me in the one area that that meant probably the most, except for my motherhood, and that is the scriptures. And so she kind of came alongside me and said, look, I love them too. And it just, <laughs> it was amazing. I thought, wow, well, of course you do, you know, um, because the Word of God then is a person, the person of Christ, not a book. And yet, when we open the Bible and we see her in her own words, when she speaks in the Magnificat, that's drawn 
largely from the Old Testament, from the Song of Hannah and the Psalms and Song of Solomon and, and other places there. So it just struck me so strongly that she wanted me to know how much she loves the Word, and she wants us, she's inviting us, and she wants us to love the Word with her and to love the Word as much as she does so that it can change us in the way, you know, that it has me and and that she knows that it can and that it will for anyone who who strives to to learn and listen through it. That was the other thing, though. Listen, you know, when we think about praying, like Mary, we think about saying stuff. But she listened first. And so that was another interesting, that first step is listen, not yeah. say something. So De- I thought that was neat, too. Definitely ponder, right? We, we know that word for sure. Uh, yeah. She pondered things in her heart. But I want to you know, remind our listeners, you are listening to Inspired by Faith, a program of the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference. I'm Emily Jaminette, and I'm here in studio with Michelle Fanley. And today we are speaking with Sonia Corbett. Well, Sonia, I love what you said about um, learning from the Blessed Mother about Scripture. And I think a lot of women are um, intimidated by Scripture. And I think you talked a lot about this when you came to the conference and how you know, you asked, you know, who's got your Bible? Oh, where's where's the Protestant converts, right? <laughs> and Emily and I, don't worry, we brought, we've got four Bibles sitting here on the table with us today. <laughs> so we are prepared if you ask us that. But, you know, how do you teach women to start to love the Scripture and read the Scripture? And, and where do they even start? They start with that process. You listen first, and you listen by reading the readings of the church on a daily basis. That's the Holy Spirit's word to the church every single day. And so he is speaking to you every day. And we worry about our circumstances and our relationships and the messes that we're in and and that the people that we love are in, and we don't know what to do, and we just we walk out in, in our flesh, and we do what we think is the best thing when the whole time the Holy Spirit is actually speaking to us about those things. And that was part of the pondering that I saw there in those joyful mysteries. Mary listens to the Word of God through the angel, and then she observes her relationships and her circumstances. That's the pondering. So she's the word ponder means to gather. So she's gathering the information specifically from her relationships and her circumstances, according to Pope Francis and Pope Benedict. They talk about the fact that her her holiness, that's what made her so holy, was that she was constantly hearing and, and receiving the Word of God and pondering her own relationships and circumstances. And that's something that we all, as women, naturally do. When John Paul II said that humanity is given to woman, he's talking about that. Our natural inclination is to nurture those people and those relationships that we're in and that we influence. And so this process then, when we listen, observe, verbalize, and entrust through those readings every single day of the church, we're hearing the Holy Spirit speak to us about our relationships and our circumstances. And he gives us guidance. He gives us peace. He gives us, um, he gives us comfort. And he gives us patience and all the virtues that we're trying to acquire. He, he helps us with that stuff on a daily basis in the Word. So we have to be listening to the, the Word of God through the readings every single day. You know, I, I wanted you to touch on one thing, because a lot of our listeners um, are Catholic, and we have some uh, non-Catholic listeners as well. Maybe you could touch on the difference between these two Bibles, you know, a Protestant Bible, a Catholic Bible, and maybe give us a one-minute summary of what that was like for you to encounter a Catholic Bible. Well, uh, the difference then, in a nutshell, is that Catholic Bibles, we have all of the original books that were included as part of the Septuagint and that were collected as what's called the canon. That's the measuring rod or the, the um, approved book. We had all of those. The Church has always had those until the Reformation at about 1500 A.D., at which time Martin Luther moved several to an appendix at the end, but then the reformers after him removed seven. So Protestant Bibles are short, several books, and that's the main difference. The translations are not all that different. There are lots and lots of different translations. And when people ask me what's the best one, I always just tell them what, whichever one you'll read. You know, whichever one is is most comfortable for you. But definitely a Catholic Bible because they include all of the books. And we need all of those books because they, they have... They have 
guidance and direction and information in them that we need, or else, you know, they wouldn't have been part of the deposit of faith. They are part of the deposit of faith, and so we can't just do away with them. That's the main difference. But as far as, what was the second question? I, I just wanted to hear what your, just, what your encounter was when you discovered there oh. were seven more books. <laughs> oh, well, I had actually always read them and, and knew about them anyway, but we had been taught they were called the Apocrypha, which is like the secret, um, the secret section, you know, that we're not supposed to look at because it would be bad for us or something. But I had kind of always sort of read them, just not as authoritative, until I came into the Catholic Church. And as I began to research the Reformation and what all occurred there, and I, I saw how it was so parallel to the kingdom split in the Old Testament, in which something very similar happened to their scriptures in the Old Testament. Um, they, those, the, the northern kingdom removed a bunch of the scriptures that were in that Old Testament canon, and so the Reformation mirrored that. And when I saw that, then I realized that those books that are part and have always been part of the the Christian canon, they're not only, they're they're not dispensable, first of all, but secondly, they're important to our faith. And so as as an individual, one of my favorite uh, passages actually comes from the Book of Wisdom, which is one of those that had been removed by the Reformers, but it talks about the manna in the wilderness, and it it says that it was conformed to every person's taste. And that's not something that you would get if you didn't have that book, you know, and that's, that's an important thing, you know, because it, it foreshadows our, our Eucharist. So personally, I found that um, it's just richer, you know, you, you've, got, you've got what you know is the full deposit of faith in the Scriptures, and, and as you said earlier, our faith is um, it's contextual to the Scriptures. It's not, it's not aside from it, and it's not... Um, it's not focused solely on it either. The scriptures are part of the deposit of faith, but you need the whole thing. You know, you need all the books. <laughs> well, so I like I like your story. It's just interesting to <laughs> have the ex- the others. Well, and for me, I'm a cradle Catholic, and so is Michelle. And I remember when I went to evangelical camp as a child, um, my my parents said it. So I, you know, with some a church group from my school, my public school. And I remember, you know, they were like, taught, we did a Bible study. Like, what is your favorite book? I'm like, the book of wisdom. And everybody <laughs> looked at me and I knew they knew like, you're not from around here. Are you lady? You know? <laughs> and so I came home. I'm like, mom, nobody knew what wisdom was. And they're like, and then my mom, you know, told me, but I think it's important that we educate even younger children about the gift of scripture and even you know, the the full deposit, like you mentioned. Yeah. And Sonia, I had one more quick question for you, because I love how you always have a verse at the tip of your tongue. And I think that's an imp- important key for us to to memorize a few scripture verses. So I know that sometimes feels like maybe it's like a, a school task or homework, but um, why is memorizing scripture important and how does it enrich your faith? It is so important because when you're in a situation where you can't get to a Bible, those verses come back to you automatically, and they are they are spiritual food and spiritual nourishment in those moments when we can't get to a Bible, or in those seasons, or even times in history when they're unavailable for some reason. You know, if, if we end up in a situation, some of the martyrs, you know, back in World War II when they were collected and put it in put in concentration camps, they had a lot of those Christians had those scriptures memorized and they they kept them going because they knew them by heart and they they kept them alive interiorly and so those scriptures are it's important to have them hidden in our hearts as the bible itself itself says because when we're on the spur of the moment and we're not sure what to do and a and a verse comes to you in that flash that that interior illumination and it just comes to you you know that that's the holy spirit telling you this is what you need to do and so it's it's so important to have that, and it, it it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be a task you know that we set out for ourselves. Although that's good too, but if we're really studying them, they'll strike us every so often. Something really important, and and what I always do in those moments is I always ask the Holy Spirit, please don't let me forget this. Please please put this in me and, and make it permanent so that. So that I always have it. I can forget everything else, you know, the day of the 
the baseball game or whatever, but I have to keep this. <laughs> this has to be a permanent part. And so it just comes naturally if you're studying because you want to keep it. You want it because it becomes so important to your own formation and to your, to, for me, for my sanity, to be perfectly honest. Well, with that, you know, do you have a scripture you could um, share with our listeners, maybe one that could bring them hope and encouragement, especially, you know, as we know, when we're anxious and we're overwhelmed or we're feeling, you know, dark and gloomy, is there something that you could um, offer them? I would say Romans 8, 28 is is always a good one. Um, All things work together for good for him, for them who love the Lord. And so all of the things that happen in our lives, Although God doesn't necessarily will um, hard or difficult or painful or even sinful things to come into our lives, He will allow them at times. And when He does so, those hard times, we can always know that He will work that together for our good. Always. That's a great comfort to me. That's a great comfort to me as well. Absolutely beautiful. And, you know, Sonia, can you just remind our listeners where they can find you online, on social media? Where are you? I'm on, I'm at BibleStudyEvangelista.com, or you can just search my name. I'm on Instagram under the same uh, moniker, Bible Study Evangelista, and also on Facebook. So that's where I am. You can find me just about anywhere. And St. Gabriel Radio, 1 o'clock Saturdays. Yep, that's it. <laughs> Well, this was a beautiful discussion. I, I, I think I got to keep my Bible in my bag. You're, you're kind of encouraging me to take the next step. So I really appreciate it. Hey, Amen. You girls gave me the willies talking about the, the uh, conference. I'm thrilled to hear that it was, it was helpful. Oh, absolutely. You got to go back and listen to that talk. It was, you know, you do need to pause sometimes and, and see what the Lord has done because that was a beautiful opportunity where we all met back in 2016 and to think we're all in the vineyard together working hard and, and, um, you know, helping, helping our sisters in Christ. So that's, that's a tremendous gift. Well, thank you. God bless. And we hope we see you again in Columbus. Thank you too. Okay. All right. Bye. 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 Huh. Wow. Awesome. Are you ready to put your Bible in your bag? I know, totally. I mean, I was just actually sharing with my small group that I was a big um, electronic um, scripture reader. So in the morning, I would get my scripture emailed to me. I would read it on my computer. You know, with a lot of things are hyperlinked. You can go, I use the USCCB translation online. And I did a program over Lent, uh, Father Michael Dank, who will be speaking at our 2023 conference um, called Pray 40 Days. And he talked about the importance of having a physical Bible and using a physical Bible to read the scripture out of every day. So even though I have it on my phone and my computer, I got out my real deal Holyfield NRSV with my Bible tabs and started every morning um, reading the scripture out of the actual Bible. And he was right. There's something about having that tangible word of God in your hand. And I keep it on my, you know, as Emily knows, I have Grand Central Station in my kitchen. So it's where my computer is, where my books, whatever I'm working on is right there. So I can make dinner and I literally tests. people, she like, like stirs the pasta and like one hand, she's like clicking with her computer. I mean, yeah, she, no she, joke. she definitely can do two things at once. So I, I keep it there always with me, but you're right. It is great to have like a small Bible, tuck it in your purse or in, in your car, because how many times are we waiting for a kid or we're, you know, sitting, you know, sitting at a doctor's office and we pick up what we pick up our Facebook or, you know, magazine on the table. And instead we can pick up the word of God. I think that's really true. And I also found too, that, you know, during this past year, I started just trying to memorize one scripture. Like I don't need to feel overwhelmed. I need to have a hundred in my heart, you know, but even just taking one step. And so I think that, you know, when Sonia spoke uh, first about the love approach, right? Listen, observe, verbalize, and trust. You know, it's a great method to remember or pause, you know, stop, you know, sit down, open up the scripture, dive deeper. But but the truth is you got to kind of set a routine, right? Don't you think? Yeah, it's got to be, you know, you have to put on your schedule or have it. Like I know on the first thing in the morning, that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the daily scripture. I'm going to do my Lexio Divina. I'm doing this study on the catechism of the Catholic church right now. Like that is done first, no matter what, even before my shower, like get up and, and read the scripture and have that time with God. And then all other things, right. You, you know, sometimes, you know, you might sacrifice, you know, the dishes might not get done because I spent 20 minutes with the Bible or whatever, but the most important things have to be done first. 
you know, and I think you and I both learned that rising early, right? I remember reading Proverbs 31 about a woman, you know, the, the woman that rises early. And, and for me, that's really changed my life. I know it has for you as well, but you got to carve out the time. And sometimes it feels like a sacrifice, but the truth is having that peace and quiet and setting your day the right way, then you can see the Lord throughout the rest of the day. And and that makes such a huge difference. Are there any other suggestions, journeys, thoughts on, you know, I really do like some of these modern books and Bibles like this, um, you know, the note taking Bible, a place, you know, I recommend highlighter, underline. I love to underline. Yeah. It's, I mean, I am like one of those anti writing in a book people. So <laughs> I haven't actually written in it, God, but I've been thinking that I want one of these note taking Bibles because you're right. It's nice to look back when you read that scripture again, what you thought and what you prayed over the last time. So that is really a gift. So the Ave note taking Bible is what we're discussing. And it's really a great tool to have that little journaling space and yeah, have a messy Bible. I have uh, Lori Crock said that it, it's good to have a messy Bible. You and, know, and I think it would actually make a nice confirmation present because a lot of times you don't know. I've given, you know, my kids a variety of different Bibles, but um, this, this one in particular, just having a space writing. And the last tip, you know, before we close is, I love to put a date down of when that scripture really touched my heart and maybe, you know, one word to remember, you know, a blessing, you know, you know, this child returned from this trip and, and, you know, something because a lot of times we're so busy, we forget, right? We forget to look back. So with that, we need to close this wonderful segment here. And we just want to thank you for joining us, Inspired by Faith. We hope you were blessed and inspired by this episode. To find out more about the Columbus Catholic Women's Conference, visit ColumbusCatholicWomen.com. And to hear more about our work, be sure to check out InspiredTheFaith.com.